What you see here is an empty ASP.NET web application. And nowadays, when you select an empty template, you do actually get an empty project. So the only thing inside this project is a web.config file and a few references to the assemblies needed to build an ASP.NET application. So the first thing I need to do is go to NuGet and get hold of the packages we need to get started. Being that I've chosen to host my own pipeline inside ASP.NET, the package I'd need is microsoft.owin.host.systemweb. I'm using the package manager console to do my install, but you can just as well use the UI. Okay, now that that's done, let's have a look at the packages.config file to see what it actually installed. As you can see, it didn't just install microsoft.owin.host.systemweb as I told it to, it also installed microsoft.owin and owin. The reason for this is that the host package that I asked it to install really only contains the actual host. The owin implementation from Project Katana is inside that microsoft.owin package. Now that we have all the packages that we need, it's time to create an entry point into our application. When we're working with Project Katana, that means that we have to create a class called startup in the root namespace of our application. Like that. Now inside this class, we have to create our actual entry point. That means creating a public static void method called configuration that takes a single parameter of the type iAppBuilder. I just want to mention that you can actually name it whatever you want and place it wherever you want, but if you do do so, you have to point it out using an attribute or an app setting in your config file. The iApp Builder interface is what we use to add middlewares to the OWIN pipeline. So now that we've got that, let's try and add a middleware to the pipeline. And since I don't think any tech demo is complete without Hello World, I think we should add a middleware that returns hello world whenever a request comes in. To add a piece of middleware to the OWIN pipeline when working with Katana, you use the iAppBuilder's use method. The use method has a couple of overloads, but the one that I want to use is the one that accepts a delegate. The delegate should accept two parameters. The first one, in this case called CTX, is an I Owen context. And the second one, in this case called next, is another delegate. And at the end of it, it should be returning a task. However, since I know that I will be doing asynchronous stuff and use the await keyword inside of my delegate, I'm actually just going to mark it as async. One thing to note is that if you're using Visual Studio 2015, you won't actually get any IntelliSense inside of that delegate until it's returning a task. There are two ways to sort that out. One is to add the async keyword like I have done here, which will cause the compiler to return a task for us, or you can go in and manually set up a return statement that will return the task for you. But until you have either of those implementations in place, there won't really be any IntelliSense for you to work with. Now that I've got that all set up, it's time to add some form of functionality to our middleware. In this case, I'm supposed to be returning hello world to the client. I do this by using the write async method on the response property on the IO in context that was passed into the delegate. And since the write is async, I need to remember to add the await keyword so the delegate doesn't return before my write is complete. The IO in context is just a thin wrapper around the environment dictionary I talked about in the previous module. In this case, I use the response property which gives me access to the stream stored in the dictionary under the key owin.responseBody. This is a lot easier than having to cast an object coming out of a dictionary and using these magic strings. If you do want to access the raw dictionary, it's available under the property called environment. Anyhow, let's press F5 and see what happens. Okay, we get hello world back like we should, but I just want to show you the source for this page. It says hello world, that's it. The server doesn't assume that it should be returning HTML and add tags to it or anything like that. It just takes whatever is in that response stream and returns it to the client. So let's head back to Visual Studio and add some tags into that response, making it valid HTML. The browser does, after all, expect us to be returning HTML to a request like that. So let's press F5 and see what happens. Okay, so we get the hello world back as we expected. Let's just have a look at the source and see what we get back. And we do get the HTML back as we expect. 
So I'm just going to close the browser and end the debugging session. So with that change, we now have a fully working Katana-based web application. It does accept incoming requests and it does return HTML responses as you'd expect.